Hello and welcome here with me today on the German watchmaking channel. Today we're going to have a look here at this wonderful little Alpina watch, C star, C strong, who cares? It's not printed, so something of this kind. Definitely an Alpina brand. Also on the case back there's the AL marked for Alpina. And here I'm going to try to open it first with the rubber ball which is, let's say, medium successful and I have to go and take some stronger weapons. This little knife thing here I found on the street and if you put the lax in there, well, you, can, you can get it pretty tight and then using this little screw thingy to open the case back without it going away. I mean, you could argue putting something, some plastic underneath to not to scratch the case back would be good, but well, the rest can be done with a rubber ball then, and there it goes. There it's, there we have the case back. There, this little gummy ring to keep water out. Oh, still looks pretty good. I think, I think we can make an effort and reuse this. Yeah, still, still in pretty good shape. Ah, and the case back. Not, not many signatures in there. Everything fine. And yeah, nice shiny little case back. Let's have a look at the movement. It's an Alpina branded rotor for an automatic watch. It's a 2783 ETA movement, which is quite nice. And we'll have a look. I think it's even running. In the beginning it was not, but if we have a look now, and oh, there it is. Oh, it's running. Not so fast, but it's running. Let's have a look. Maybe on the time grapher will tell us. Oh, and there we have the bad news. Amplitude looking pretty bad. And it's losing 70 seconds with some beat arrow. That's not what we want to see. But yeah, let's continue. Maybe we can fix that. Here I took out this uh, winding stem in order to get the movement out of the case. But. It's not so easy. I, I couldn't immediately figure out how how the movement should get out of here, but yeah, eventually I figured out <laughs> I have to loosen some screws first, and yeah, this might usually be obvious, but I thought maybe we can just get it out like that. There is one screw, the other one is on the other side behind the rotor, and there we have it. Don't mind me not working with gloves here. I mean, we're gonna clean all the watch parts anyway. I should still probably wear gloves. I mean, just for precaution, but yeah. I will not, please don't be mad. And yeah, now, will it come out? Not yet. But it keeps running away, which is good. And here, yeah. ah, this little case ring goes off. A little bit of touch. Not quite in focus here. Excuse me for that. And I think now the movement should just fall out of the watch. Uh, having a little look at this case ring here, obviously. Very, very fascinating. Yeah, now I'm taking the cushion, twisting it around, and there we have it. Movement and dial are outside of the case. Um, yeah, little red second hand. It's looking quite quite cool here. So let's take off the hands. I protect the dial with this little plastic baggie, and then I lift them off the wheels that are guiding them. I mean, the dial has already taken a little bit of a beating over the past years. I think people try to screw the movement out of the case. And by this, they damaged the corner or the borders of the dial a little bit. I mean, some patina is always there. And now, taking off the dial, I had to loosen these little, little claws first, but yeah, it was not so easy to film, so I didn't show it. 
I'm putting the dial in a little dial holder here, just to keep it safe for later, for the reassembly. And then we can uh, have a look at the back of the watch. It's uh, an automatic with a date function also, which tells just the day of the month. And uh, here's another ring or like two half rings to keep the dial flat on the watch. But first I'm gonna take off the automatic rotor which is winding the watch with movement and therefore I'm loosening the screw here and uh, storing this also away for later. There's a nice Alpina branding on the on the rotor. And there you can also see in the bottom the 2783 branding of the movement, ETA, which as I mentioned has the state function, but also a possibility to change the date with a position of the stem, which is quite nice, but also it brings in a little bit more complication to the movement. I'm starting here on this on the other side of the watch to disassemble. First taking out some screws. This is mainly keyless and calendar work protection, which we will have a look at now. Oops, there goes one part, which is just a little protection bridge. And this side is concerning with the calendar, with a flipping of the date. And here I'm taking a little bit of this greenish blue thing. It's um, called Rodico. You could compare it to some kind of Play-Doh, but it's it's just really nice for watchmaking to, to clean parts, to keep something in place. It's really good. It's not staying on the material. And yeah, this is this little spring that is flipping over the date getting some more stuff out of the way and then we can turn our sights to the date disc well we can put this away safely as well and then we already go to the direction of the keyless system that is yeah, letting you operate on the watch either setting the time winding the, the complete mechanism or setting the date Oh, there we have uh, the yoke spring. It's a really powerful spring in the watch and it uh, can fly. Fly a lot. Here I'm taking it out safely, but then, well, it might, it might fly anyway. <laughs> but in this case I could find it. Mm, then here we're taking the yoke, so-called yoke, and the setting lever. Oh, it doesn't want to go so easily, but in the end we got it. Oh, there I still forgot something from the calendar works. <laughs> yeah. Quite easy to oversee something sometimes. Now we're having the movement flipped over. We can safely take out the balance. be careful it's a real 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 thin spring there which can't get damaged and here pallet fork bridge Pallet fork got a little bit stuck, 
So, yeah, had to shake it out. But everything alright. Now we can have a look at the automatic works here. It has an uh, own little mechanism in itself. Taking two screws out. And that's the automatic winding system. Turning our, our eyes on the ratchet wheel and the barrel bridge, which I'm taking out now. The ratchet wheel is the connection to the to the mainspring of the watch, which is holding all the power, and connected to it is this crown wheel, which is having a huge screw. And here, this is the crown wheel, which we are using to wind the watch. And yeah, there's also the click, which is holding it in place, so it's not going back, it's not unwinding. Just click. And the click spring, which is also a little tiny, tiny spring that can fly away and never be found. In this case, it got safely to the harbor. Taking a few screws out, and there is the barrel bridge going. Wonderful. So here we have the train of wheel and the bridge that is designed to hold all the wheels in place. Yeah, and lifting it up carefully, we find that everything is still in place. Now we can take out the center wheel. Very careful. And this is the fourth wheel. This is the escape wheel, the barrel, the main barrel. And uh, a little stuck, but the third wheel wants to go as well. And uh, there we go. There we have the sliding pinion and the winding pinion. Only one thing to do, taking apart the automatic. It's, it's pretty, pretty easy here, we have just one screw and then four little wheels that are guiding the motion of the rotor to the winding system, to the crown wheel and then the mainspring can be wound just with the shake of an arm. Now, I'm gonna take a little bit of peg wood and I'm gonna clean what I can clean before I'm putting this to the, to the watch cleaning machine cleaning all the pivot points. Those are synthetic rubies that guide as pivot points for the for the wheel pinions. And it, it's not bad to clean them a little bit before you put everything to the watch cleaning. Just to get all kinds of dirt and debris off. Here also the barrel bridge which has some dried up oil you can see it. Some gunk. But all in all it's not so bad. Maybe the watch just needs a good oiling and maybe cleaning of the mainspring also. 
So here I'm gonna now put all the stuff in the little baskets that are designed to go into the watch cleaning machine. Therefore I'm putting the balance back on the main plate in order to keep it safe when it goes into the watch cleaning machine. I'm putting it in his baskets and so go all the other parts then. the cover of the mainspring barrel. You just press it on some metal to open it and then I'm trying to take out the mainspring now in order to clean it. But first we're gonna take the barrel arbor out. Mm, there we have it, putting it away. Also goes onto the cleaning machine and giving also a rudimentary clean of some old oil and debris to the cover plate of the mainspring. And there goes the mainspring into one of these little baskets, also going to the cleaning machine. kids one after the other and here I'm just putting the cover on top to keep everything in place and then we go into the wash cleaning machine this is a quite old machine with the name super automat but I think the name holds what it promises it's really super it's full automatic and goes through three stages of cleaning First, a uh, wash clean solution, platina, which is 1 to 20, mixed with water. Then it's going into distilled water for the first rinsing, where it's changing directions as well and cleaning off the parts. After that, we are getting rid of the water and isopropanol alcohol and yeah, always drying them up a little bit in the top and then going into the heating. that's done we can take care of the pellet fork this is not going to the watch cleaning machine because the little pellet jewels are attached with a substance called shellac and isopropanol would dissolve the shellac so we have a specialized solution for that also we need to take care of the jewels on top of the balance and underneath the balance which are a two-part combo and they are also cleaned in the same solution, which is some Swiss Bejon solution called B dip. There we go into I'm taking out this bottom part, and if I get it, quite tricky in this solution and this strange little glass that I have. And this is the top jewel. Now comes a tricky part. We have to take a tiny drop of oil and put it right in the middle of the jewel and then cover it up. Right like this. 
And then we're putting it back. This is the shock setting, so if you drop the watch, this little spring will protect your watch from, or rather the balance from breaking. Oh, getting it to sit quiet. Perfect, and there we go. Now we just have to close this shock setting, spring. On the other side the same, taking some Rodico to take out the jewel. And again, same process. can be quite nerve-wracking when something's flying away, but yeah, that's the clean clean mainspring and uh, we're gonna try to put it back into the mainspring barrel. I have a tool for that, it's a mainspring winder, putting this on top of this little holder pinion and then you can screw the spring back into the this little uh, temporary barrel, let's say. Doing a few counter rotations now to loosen it again from this pinion and then carefully taking this out and now it can be transferred back into the mainspring barrel. This is called braking grease, especially for automatic watches. You want to have something on the side of the mainspring barrel, there on this wall. And then you can push the spring back into the barrel. Here's a little tool to close this mainspring barrel again. And that's it already. Let's hope that this can influence the amplitude of the watch a little bit. First escape wheel, third wheel comes back, fourth wheel is attached and uh, then we have the center wheel which is getting a little bit of oil, medium viscosity oil. Just trying to be careful here, in order not to bend anything. And if everything is aligned, we can put on top the train wheel bridge.
And if all the wheels are sitting proper, then start screwing it down. Of course, being really careful. seems to spin. Now we need to oil the jewels. the same on the other side. And here I am trying to reassemble the click mechanism. Pushing this little spring back in place. Well, there it goes. Now a little drop of oil on the click. And there it sits. Also here a little drop of oil. the crown wheel. A little drop of oil here. Before the mainspring is re-entering the house. Also slide back into place. spring is interacting well with the terrain of wheels. Final drop of oil and before the ratchet wheel comes back a little bit of oil underneath there as well. Turn our eyes to the keyless works. A little bit of grease here, really low viscosity oil or grease for metal on metal action. Oh, the sliding pinion already in, winding pinion as well, and there goes the stem. So here a little bit of grease in the middle of the sliding pinion where the yoke will attack. And also 
also where the setting lever will come into place. There he goes. And there you can kind of see what he does. The jumper. And the yoke. back into place which is nice a little bit more of grease you can never be greasy enough just don't want anything bad to happen between these metal parts, huh? intermediate wheel and the wheel that is leading to the date setting little bit of oil medium viscosity oil on the pinions and there goes the minute wheel And this nice little metal bridge to cover up all the mess of the killers. Just giving it a loose screw down in order to put the second screw there and then starting to tighten them a little bit more. And there we go. Let's check out if it works. Date position. This is the time setting. And all the way back is winding. And also works. Great. Well, let's take out the date wheel. just call this thing the the date yolk. I'm not sure how it's called but mm -hmm. 
And also this little spring has to come back into place, which is not quite easy, but with a little bit of help, oh, there we go, oh, sitting good. I was quite happy when this little cover plate was on top, because this spring, I don't know, it just looked at me the wrong way. Still some oil, oh, not too much, cleaning up a little bit. And there's this little date setting wheel as well. A little bit of oil on the connection between minute wheel and hour wheel. And letting the hour wheel slide right in. Mm. And there it goes. So the pellet fork can come back into place. Pellet fork bridge on top. fork can move freely so this means we can screw in the pellet fork bridge putting a little wind into the watch to just test the pellet fork it should jump now from one side to the other and back and yep there it goes. That's what we want to see. And let's see if the watch is running, eh? Putting the balance back in place and then everything should kick up. Can be quite tricky. You see this little pinion in the bottom? It has to go in this, in this pivot point. And oh, finally it went in. Setting it down. And, ah, wonderful. Let's screw it down a little bit before it stops again. That's what we want to see. I mean, it was running before, but it's always good to pull the watch back together and it starts running immediately. That's a good feeling. And you know that you didn't screw up completely. Now we're going to the automatic works. All four wheels in the right pivots and covering them up with this little plate. And there it falls into place. It just needs one screw. And down it goes. viscosity oil and the automatic winding system can go back on top of the watch it's always important to wind the winding stem a little bit in order for the mechanism to be able to fall into place ah. And there it goes. Perfect. Just 
two little beautiful blue screws. Holding it down, didn't completely screw it down yet. Just want to see if everything works. And now giving it a final twist. Wonderful. And giving the balance a little touch, it immediately starts running. And that looks quite good. So I would say the assembly is almost over. Just something missing. And that's the automatic rotor. And it interacts with the automatic works. Just giving the dial a little touch with Rodico, get the dust off, some dirt, and then we can put it back in the watch. I'm not gonna repaint it or anything. Now, of course, the hour wheel has to go back, and then the dial can sit down, relax. And there it falls into place, which looks quite nice. To fasten it on the sides with the two little, two little hooks that have to be pressed in. And after putting the case ring back, I'm sitting the watch into the case. Finally, I can put in the stem. Pressing down. And it goes. And the case screws. Just making everything nice and tight. Just a nice little gummy ring, putting a little bit of grease on it, a little bit of fat to make it resistant for aging in water and then the case back can be screwed on. I'll just do it with a ball now and we're going over to the hands. I'm placing the hour hand down exactly pointing 12 o'clock and pressing it down softly same with the minute hand pressing it down and making it sit nice and there comes the seconds hand And also this gets a little push down, just so it sits nice and tight and will not fall off when you move a little bit. And there it is. Blowing away all the dust that is left over, putting in this nice little ring, which is marking the minutes. And then we can put the crystal back. Of course I polished it. Yeah, and there we have it.
It looks much better now. And the time graph shows the amplitude got up to 270. The watch is plus minus one second per day, which is completely acceptable. And I think it turned out quite well. It's a real nice watch for a lot of years to be enjoyed in good friendship. Have fun. <laughs>